Hello everybody and welcome to a special episode of Into the Lens. This episode revolves around trauma and its effects it has on human beings. The story that does this is Beloved by Toni Morrison. This episode reflects how it can be looked at in the new light. Tonight we will be discussing the new historicism lens and how it tells a story relevant even today. I sat down with three of the most prominent scholars to talk about this book in the new historicism lens. Here's what they had to say. The new historicism lens looks at history in a new light. The lens aims to reevaluate and reassess what we have been taken for granted as fact. The lens uses different sources and viewpoints to learn the history above and beyond your average textbook. Overall, the new historicism lens re-examines history as we know it to explore new possibilities, go into new depths about information, and to give voices to the otherwise voiceless. Interesting, interesting. And you studied Seth's character, correct? That is correct, yes. And how does Seth's trauma differ from the typical depiction of post-slavery trauma? The thing is that post-slavery trauma is actually never depicted in a classroom, a textbook, or anywhere else you would learn anything about slavery. Even the story about Margaret Garner is limited. Toni Morrison writes that the historical Margaret Garner is fascinating, but, to a novelist, confining. The traditional coverage of the Margaret Garner story is limited and often left out of the history books. In fact, stories of individual slaves as ex-slaves suffering are almost never told or taught. And how does Morrison go deeper by telling the story? Toni Morrison attempts to delve deeper into the trauma experienced by slaves by retelling Margaret Garner's story in a new light through Seth's desperate actions taken to avoid returning and bringing her children to the institution that caused the trauma in the first place. I took and put my babies where they'd be safe. Seth decided that she would rather kill her children and herself eventually than go back into the institution of slavery. Not only did I want to find about Setha's point of view and her traumatic experiences, I also wanted to find out about Paul D. I talked to Oliver Crockett to find out more. Hello, Oliver. Now, Paul D. was one of the only male characters where we experienced his life through first person. He also has a love interest in Setha's life. Does Paul D.'s past affect his ability to love? Absolutely. Paul D. has had to suffer the loss of far too many loved ones to allow himself to get hurt again. In the words of Toni Morrison, it was some time before he could get could put Alfred, Georgia, 6O, school teacher, Pally, his brothers, Sethus, Nestor, the taste of iron, the sight of butter, the smell of hickory, notebook paper, one by one into the tobacco tin lodged in his chest. By the time he got to 124, nothing in the world could pry it open again. Paul D. suppressed his emotions and put them back into the tobacco tin that he made sure no one could open. It was easier that way. Mm -hmm. And why does Paul D. hide his emotions from Setha? Because he is ashamed of the things he was forced to do in pursuit of freedom and happiness. Toni Morrison demonstrates this when she says, He would keep the rest where it belonged, in that tobacco tin, buried in his chest with where a red heart used to be. Its lid rusted shut. He would not pry it loose now in front of this sweet, sturdy woman, for if she got a whiff of what its contents were, it would shame him. And as a man in Beloved, was he expected to hide his emotions like men are today? Yes, the tobacco tin is like a lockbox in his heart that allows him to hide his emotions. He has suffered from them so much, he sort of turns stoic. Paul D. and Setha both share traumatic experiences, but I wanted to dig deeper. I wanted to find out what Beloved of all people wanted to think. Here with me is Shannon Halliday, the most renowned speaker in the literary world. Thank you for joining me today. I have to just start off by asking, how did Beloved's memories bring untold stories to the surface? Her stream of consciousness chapter is probably the best place to start. It brings to life the previously unknown hardships of Africans. She talks about how they were piled on top of each other underneath the ship. Did she share any of them specifically? Well, Morrison wrote that storms rocked us and mixed of men into the woman and the woman into the men. You can see that the ship is very disorganized and they were extremely mistreated. Why did we not know the truth behind the ships from the very beginning? Back in the 1800s, the slave owners tried their best to keep these stories hidden, so no one would know that about the abuse. 
It wasn't until recently that these beliefs were minimized and Beloved's thoughts became facts. Now, Beloved had a vision of herself on the slave ships. How did these memories affect her actions she had toward Setha and her family? The slave ship caused a lot of pain and suffering. While on 124 with Denver, she experiences a traumatic flashback. And what is that exactly? Morrison writes, Beloved bends over, curls up in rocks. Her eyes go to, to no place. Her moaning is so small, Denver can hardly hear it. In this, Beloved is reliving her traumatic time on the Middle Passage, being crushed by other Africans being brought to America. Hello everybody and welcome again. Now America has suffered tragedy in the recent years. Can you explain how these events are related to the issues in Beloved? I think the most recent example of tragedy that relates to Beloved is the shooting of Michael Brown. While some say that racism has nothing to do with the shooting, many people say that this traumatic event dates back to the days of slavery. Toni Morrison demonstrates how slavery affects us today and will have an impact on us for the foreseeable future. This Ferguson case is an example of such an impact in that the trauma of slavery has not been diminished over time. Now, Beloved has been arguably the best book of all time, but has it always been perceived as the book of the century? No, I mean, there's always going to be discussion and varying opinions on books based on personal preferences, um, the perceived idea of a good novel, so no. Different times, huh? Now I have a question for Oliver. In school you learn about slavery in a typical U.S. textbook, but what differences did Beloved bring that were different than the textbook? Toni Morrison offers a unique perspective on the history of slavery. Uh, she allows for a personal experience into what ha really happened during times of slavery. Now stay with me here. When Fifty Shades of Grey came out, there was controversy everywhere. Was Beloved the same way? I don't think that Beloved is a uh, precedent to Fifty Shades because they have very different subject matters, although they were both very controversial when they first came out. For instance, when Beloved first came out, no one really wanted to talk about slavery or just anything about segregation or any of the sorts. So it was very controversial at the time, although it has become less controversial as time has gone on and we have become more accepting. I think the same thing may happen with Fifty Shades of Grey. When it first came out, it was very controversial. No one really wanted to talk about the subject matter in the book, but as we go on, it might show to have the same effect as Beloved did, where it becomes more widely accepted. The new historicism lens helps explain how Beloved brought issues about slavery into the light. Beloved brings the uncomfortable issue of slavery to the forefront, and one day hopefully topics like slavery will not be awkward and uncomfortable to talk about. But until then, we need books like Beloved, so we are forced to confront these issues. I'm Jamie Shea, and thank you for watching this special edition of Into the Lens. Good night.